Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking about an over-the-top beautiful postcard perfect Sunday morning in the collapse of global industrial civilization and everything else here on this just just a picture-perfect day on the planet. Uh, that would be Sunday morning. It is August 27th, 2023. I'm sitting here enjoying my planet-saving cup of organic coffee behind my 49-square-foot tiny house here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, and I, uh, so guys, I'm going to leave it to you to uh, decide what this video has to do about the collapse of a planet. Uh, you can decide for yourself uh, what this has to do. Now, I had to wrestle this rant away from uh, my evil twin over at that other channel uh, that we don't talk about here in polite company at uh, at Collapse Chronicles. So uh, I need to remember what channel I'm on and somewhat rein this in because I've already had this rant over there several times over the years or rant similar to this. So anyway, this is in response to a an essay that I read on medium.com this morning. And I'm not going to share the name of this person and a self a self-described doomer uh, and 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 not going to read out the essay, but I will put the link to it. So if you want to read it, you can uh, read it yourself. Cause, I mean, it's not my aim here to in embarrass or insult this person by uh, dedicating this chronicle of the collapse to this doomer. So anyway, this was, I think this essay was just the last straw. And, and I've been reading more and more of uh, articles similar to this in the mainstream media, I've noticed. It seems to have become a meme, <clears throat> and it is asking the question, apparently, guys, with no trace of irony. Asking the question, is one million dollars enough to retire on? Uh, where these privileged uh, millionaires, uh, probably most of them white, but I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of just automatically seeing the word white after the word privileged, like white people are the only uh, economically privileged people on this planet and acting like there's no white people on this planet who are not privileged millionaires. So I don't give a shit what color your skin is. If you are a millionaire, uh, asking the, the, the serious question and tossing and turning at night, uh, panicking that one million dollars is not uh, enough to retire on. Uh, you, you are just uh, so hopelessly clueless that you're you know, you're, you're just irredeemably clueless to be sitting uh, here and asking this question. Uh, and, and 
I, I have a lot of personal friends who uh, are, you know, retirement age. I'm talking in their 60s and 70s. I, I know plenty of people, uh, probably including my own siblings, a asking the absurd question whether having a million dollars uh, when you retire uh, is going to be enough to uh, retire on uh, in, in the year 2023. Uh, and I, you know, if I have to be honest with myself, I was one of these clueless morons myself. Uh, up until 2008, when uh, I yanked my head out of my privileged, in my case, privileged honky ass. And uh, at, this was one of the many questions I asked, and, and I was absolutely embarrassed uh, to find that I was seriously asking this absurd question. Uh, so anyway, um, so this person writing this, th th this very obviously uh, college-educated professional person working in the uh, in the Bay Area living uh, in a little town ironically enough of Felton California where I lived for several years and sold real estate uh, for years um, was a successful realtor in Felton California unbelievable the 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 irony, uh, the six degrees of separation. Um, so this is, a, you know, somebody who has, a, a, as they repeat several times, one of the main reasons they are a millionaire uh, is that they are not a breeder. They did not breed, so they never paid one penny uh, for raising a child. So uh, that is one of the great secrets of becoming a millionaire. Uh, and this person, like, like I was and most people, uh, who would be considered millionaires are what are called paper millionaires, usually through real estate and investment portfolios and whatnot. It's not like this person has one million dollars in cash liquid, uh, but you know the equity in their home and their uh, investment portfolios. Which, of course, uh, will, any day can go from one million dollars to worthless. Uh, so, right off the top, we have uh, we we have an asterisk, the size of the collapse of uh, the global industrial economy, beside the word millionaire. So. I was, for years, uh, what is considered a paper millionaire. I was, I don't know on paper uh, how much I had. Uh, I was probably a multi-millionaire in the year 2008, you know, when I quit my uh successful real estate career in Austin, Texas, uh, and sold six out of the seven houses that I, quote, owned, meaning that had mortgages against them, 
and was no longer a paper millionaire when I did that, you know, thinking I was moving to the Peruvian Amazon to live in a tiny house for the rest of my life and uh, didn't turn out that way. I, I won't get into the story of what happened to me in my tiny house in Peru. Another story for another day. But I ended up, as we all know, in right about four years ago, buying this tumble-down shack uh, on the side of the road out here in the boonies, out here in the woods of upstate New York. Uh, you know, buying this run-down hovel uh, that the, the, the person writing this essay in medium.com, it, it, it never would have entered their mind to buy this dump. Uh, and since then, you know, I, I have built uh, three tiny houses. So now, so if you add up, so my, my main house, well, the, the main shack uh, has 384 square feet in it. I have one 49 square foot tiny house, which is where I am uh, having this rant from. I have a 120 square foot a tiny house. I have an 80 square foot tiny house and I think my camper is 96 square feet. So if you uh, add up my five units here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, add the five of them together, uh, they will add up to what is that, a little less than 750 square feet, or the five of them combined are less than one half the size of the four bedroom, three bath uh, McMansion with a two car garage that I, you know, is my primary residence back when uh, I became a Doomer in 2008 and sold. And, uh, so anyway, I'm not going to read the essay. As I say, I will put the link onto it and you can read it yourself. But what I I will read my comment to, uh, to this person uh, wondering, to this fellow Doomer, wondering if they can retire with only a million dollars. And it might be added, since they put it here in there, that uh, they're getting about $50,000 a year in Social Security, you know, outside of the paper million dollars, uh, getting right about $50,000 per year. Social Security, just for the record, I get $880 a month. So uh, I get about $10,000 a year uh, on Social Security. Okay, but this was my response to uh, this person and anybody else, uh, whether it's one of my own siblings, my best friend, uh, whoever else, looking at me with a straight face, whining, wonder if they can retire uh, with only a million dollars. <throat> As a former realtor and resident of Felton, California, who was a paper millionaire for many years, 
I can assure you that there are other ways to live, meaning other ways to live in retirement without having $1 million or $50,000 a year income coming in. <clears throat> I can assure you that there are other ways to live, but, and please do not take this as an insult, it is just a fact. You and anybody else uh, looking at me with a straight face and no trace of irony, uh, asking if they can retire on $1 million, but you would no more trade lives with my life in paradise outside of Ithaca, New York, than you would roll around naked in a nest of fire ants. I have exactly zero sympathy for any clueless moron asking with no trace of irony if a million bucks, even if it is just on paper as yours is, is enough to retire on. This group of people include all of my own siblings and most of my best friends, including at least one realtor from Felton who still speaks to me since I pulled my head out of my privileged honky ass 15 years ago and walked away from all that happy horse shit. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> oh God, and you wonder why the planet is in the shape I'm in. And it brought to mind whenever I hear this, uh, this whine uh, coming from my millionaire friends whining uh, how how poor they are, uh, when I walked away from being a millionaire uh, 15 years ago, I honestly don't know how many millions of dollars I would be worth right now, at least on paper, if I had not made the decision I made 15 years ago. I'm quite sure I would be worth millions of dollars uh, on paper would be living in a beautiful, uh, at least four bedroom home uh, on the Green Belt in Austin, Texas. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So there's this uh, songwriter named Greg Brown, who's got some excellent Doomer songs, but one of my favorite songs of Greg Brown's is called Who Woulda Thunk It? Who Woulda Thunk It? This is one of the verses from uh, the Greg Brown classic, Who Woulda Thunk It? Uh, talking to uh, anybody asking the question, is one million dollars enough to retire on? <clears throat> We used to say, I don't care if I never have any money, as long as I have my sweet honey and a shack in the woodland. Now we say, I don't care if I don't have money, but it's not true. We can't live without money, no, because we don't want to. We want one of those and two of those and oh that one looks neat. Wrap it up. Put it on my MasterCard. Put it on my Visa. And I sing it now. Hey, 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 hey. Who would have thunk it? Hey, 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 hey. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> wow. 
one of the great boomer anthems. Uh, Greg Brown, I think that he is about my age and about the age of the person who uh, wrote this uh, essay in medium.com. Uh, there is one reason that someone cannot live on one million dollars, not even mentioning a fifty thousand dollar per year social security income on top of it. There is one reason that uh, somebody can't live on that is because they don't want to. It has nothing on any level to do about the ability to scale down. Uh, this person writing this, as they talk about uh, in the article, could sell that house in Felton, California, and probably, I'm, I'm quite sure, uh, get one million dollars for it, do exactly what I did, uh, well, somewhere between four and 15 years ago, take that one million dollars, they could buy a, buy a $300,000 house for cash, okay? $300,000 uh, cash money for a beautiful home that they would own free and clear, and then they would have $700,000 in cash and $50,000 uh, in uh, income on top of the $700,000 and, and owning a beautiful $300,000 home free and clear in, uh, you know, up here in the Finger Lakes of New York. And uh, if it gets too cold in the winter, they could buy hell, they could buy a $300,000 house here and another $300,000 house, uh, I, I don't know, in Florida or where, wherever and these clueless morons such as myself go to in the winter. They could buy a beautiful place in Costa Rica and, and have hundreds of thousand dollars in their pocket uh, and $50,000 coming in. But... It's never going to happen because they don't want to. And to suggest to these people that they would live in this shack that, uh, you know, that I bought, the, the, the very suggestion, uh, this, this doomer writing this article, well, as I say, uh, would no more uh, agree to do what I did and buy this little shack uh, in, in the woods out in the middle of, uh, of nowhere, as, as Greg Brown is talking about uh, in this song. And even if this person did, this person, unlike me, has a honey, even if this person uh, could be convinced to do what I did, uh, their honey would, would blow the whistle on it. Uh, you know, I've had, uh, I need to look up this research. I don't think I've mentioned this. I remember years ago reading this very interesting research talking about, you know, the the drive to gather stuff, the, the innate human drive to uh, gather more and more and more of this planet-eating stuff 
that you do not need uh, in, in your life uh, that somehow you manage to live without ever having it in your life, as strong as that urge is to buy and buy more of that stuff, an even stronger urge than, uh, than that uh, urge is to protect the planet-eating worthless crap that you have already gathered. It, 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 is, it is a stronger human, just genetic programming to not let go of this planet-eating shit than, uh, th than it was a drive to gather uh, this shit. You know, walking away. Uh, walking away from, the, you know, a beautiful four-bedroom, three-bath home uh, on the Green Belt in South Austin, Texas, uh, you know, walking away uh, from a successful real estate career, whatever, uh, it, it, it is the, uh, it's the hardest thing. Uh, you will ever do in your life, which is the reason that nobody is doing it. Uh, and, and obviously, I will add to this, uh, you know, despite the fact that I have reduced my personal ecological footprint by about 90%. Uh, my own ecological footprint uh, has been reduced by approximately 90% of what it was 15 years ago and, and certainly what it would be today if I had not walked away from it. Uh, my ecological footprint uh, you know, my own personal Earth overshoot day probably used to be about the middle of February. And, you know, with the decision that I made to walk away from all of that crap, uh, now my own personal Earth overshoot day, oh maybe the middle of April. If uh, 8 billion people on this planet uh, tried to live my lifestyle, we would probably need four planets, middle of April. Yeah, we would probably need four planets to support eight billion clueless morons living my lifestyle and uh, living the lifestyle uh, of this person, this doomer in this beautiful home in Felton, California, uh, I'm guessing we would probably need 12 planets uh, in, instead of just four. Uh, th this, this is one of the major reasons uh, humanity and this planet is doomed. That there is one person on this planet clueless enough to be asking themselves, is one million dollars with or without a fifty thousand dollar income enough to retire on uh, it, it is, is the, 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 the fact that one person on this planet much less the probably millions of millionaires asking themselves this question uh, is one of the major reasons this planet is doomed and Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up and take my own ecological footprint and crank up my 
save the planet electric lawnmower. Get out there and get her done before my next guest arrives to uh, move into the 49 square foot tiny house. Get out there and enjoy your genetically programmed imperative to uh, hold on to all of your planet-eating shit while you still can. Bye, guys. Mm, man, would you look at this day. Just another day in paradise, this maple tree. Uh, <laughs> I'm calling this maple tree a doomer maple. You know, there's about three of these maple trees out of my 50 or so that has already lost its leaves. I am calling these three maple trees on my property doomer trees. And uh, while all of the other clueless moron maple trees are still bright green uh, with all of their leaves thinking, uh, <laughs> thinking that everything is normal on this planet. So I want to thank the Doomer maple trees for having the, uh, the cojones to send out a message to the world. My guys. <laughs>